So last time, we said that in order to be able to perform surgical navigation, one of the basic principles is the registration of the actual patient with their virtual on-screen representation, which is the CBCT scan. If previously we had to prepare a special stent and have the patient scanned with an artificial fiducial inside their mouth, now, with the introduction of Navident 2 and trace registration, these stent and fiducial are no longer needed. The patient's teeth, crowns, or abutments can now serve as our natural fiducial for the registration. It reduces significantly the potential for inaccuracy, and there is no need now for a special scan, so less radiation, less time, and less cost. My part in today's webinar focuses on the trace and place workflow in the maxilla. I'll go over the new steps of the workflow in Navident software, which are the importation of the CBCT scan without a fiducial into Navident, and placing the landmarks on the teeth that we're going to trace. The part of planning crowns and implants hasn't changed, so I won't be reviewing it and will continue with the clinical part that consists of the installation of the head tracker on the patient's head, calibration of the tracer tool, and the trace registration itself, followed by the registration accuracy check. So, without any further delay, Navident is started and the patient's CBCT scan is imported as usual. Since the scan has no fiducial in it, I need to tell Navident which jaw am I going to be working on and its location on the scan. To do so, I first drag the red line to the level of the occlusal plane approximately, then I select the button indicating the upper jaw. I manually mark the jaw centerline curve, usually at the level of mid-root. This curve is required for the generation of the panoramic view. Next, I scroll through the scan to look for any motion artifacts which, if present, can result in inaccurate navigation. Implant planning is done as usual. We have a new button, Trace Register. It opens up this 3D panoramic image on which we do the marking of teeth for tracing. We are looking at the jaw from its buccal aspect and it is mirrored so the patient's right side is on the right hand side of the screen. You can see that as I move the mouse over the 3D model, it sticks to its outer surface. There's a small two-dimensional view showing the cross section where I'm pointing. The red crosser is focused on the surface of the tooth which I'm pointing at. The letter B indicates the buccal aspect. By clicking on that point, I'm selecting it as a landmark from which I will start the tracing on that tooth. I continue placing landmarks, Note that I place them on both sides of the surgical site and, as possible, on teeth that are easily accessible for tracing. Note the scatter artifacts on these teeth. When I place the mouse over these artifacts, I cannot see the nice distinct clear surface I got on the other landmarks I made. Therefore, I should place my landmark on a surface which is not affected. After placing three landmarks, the tracer tool used for the tracing can be calibrated. The minimal number of landmarks required for tracing is 3, and the maximal number is 6. Regardless of the sequence of marking, the landmarks are numbered from right to left, starting with the most distal landmark on the right. The planning part is completed, and we move over to tracing. Starting with installation of the head tracker, followed by calibration of the tracer tooltip, and then tracing on the teeth that we have just marked. A quick reminder, the head tracker is the device which allows us to track the patient's maxilla during navigation. It consists of plastic frame with protective eye lenses holding a tracking tag which is affixed to the patient's head using elastic ear hooks and supporting nose pads. The nose pads can be separated and adjusted. They should be positioned aside the most depressed point of the nose bridge between the eyes where the skin barely moves when the nose is wrinkled. The ear hooks should be placed fully around each ear and in contact with the skull. Hair should be moved away. Some spacing should be left between the lenses and the skin to prevent accidental contact and motion of the tag if the patient winces. Before calibrating the tooltip, it is important to make sure that the thumb screw holding the tracer tag on the tracer tool is fully tightened and both parts are rigidly connected. To calibrate the tracer tooltip, I hold the jaw tag as my calibrator and the tracer tool in front of the camera. 
at a distance of no more than 50 centimeters from it, with the tracer tool's tip pressed against the dimple in the jaw tag. Once the camera identifies both jaw tag and tracer tag, it will calibrate the tracer tool's tip. I'm waiting for the calibration process to complete. I now place my tracer on the buckle aspect of the first tooth I selected as close as possible to the first landmark, keeping it there as instructed. That sound and hold means I should stay still in place. When Navident identifies the tracker is static, the hold disappears. I now start tracing by sliding the ball tip over the surface of the tooth. As I trace, Navident collect points. That's the sound you hear. This sound indicates that tracing on the tooth is done, as 100 points have been collected. Moving over to the second landmark, the same sequence repeats itself. I'm holding the tracer in place, getting the cue and start tracing. Note that I keep my tracer's tip on the tooth surface all the time. I'm tracing on at least three sides of the tooth, buccal, occlusal and palatal. Moving over to the third landmark. Note I pass from buccal to palatal over the incisal edge, tracing it too, keeping the ball tip on the surface all the time. And I can continue the tracing also on an adjacent tooth. When all landmarks have been traced, Navident indicates it by a special sound. And the registration is being performed. Navident is now looking for the best match between the tracing I just did and the teeth surfaces in the CBCT scan. After the registration is done, I have to verify its accuracy. This is done by touching with the tracer tooltip on different locations on the teeth and comparing its physical location on the tooth with its virtual representation on the screen. The best view to check it is the cross-sectional view. The circle representing the ball tip of the tracer tool should be touching the external surface of the tooth crown. Accuracy should be checked on all aspects, buccal or palatal, incisal slash occlusal, and mesial or distal. An inaccurate registration would look like this. While the tracer's ball tip is touching on the tooth surface, the blue circle appears inside the tooth or hovering out of it. In this case, the tracing should be repeated. After the registration accuracy has been verified, we can proceed to the surgical navigation, starting with drill calibration as usual.